Hello, welcome to another video from the Fancy Legion. I've got Sean with me again. Um, Good back. I'm what following on from our uh, top 10 series. We're now on to wide receivers. So who we draft and in, in what order. Well, I've yeah. got some interesting players on here. One's very interesting that you're going to think, no way, because I know you don't like him. So... <laughs> Um, <laughs> I love that thinking. Good, I think, good. you know, head and shoulders, probably both got him at number one, I guess. I don't know who you have got, but Michael Thomas seems to be a tier. Yeah, tier yeah, yeah. It, it, It's the only right. player, the only wide receiver that produced 200 fantasy points last year in standard in terms of wide receivers. So, um, and there'll be no surprise that he should be um, the number one and wide receiver again this season. And the only thing that can stop that is injury, which you can't predict with him because he hasn't shown any kind of issues. He looks brilliant. Absolutely sublime. I mean, is he going to get another 150 looks? Probably. At least. Yeah. I mean, you know, he's been there. He's got no change of quarterback unless something happens to Breeze. So, um, I think a lot of things trend good better team, for Michael. Good team. He's, he's clear number one. He's got Emmanuel Sanders might take some pressure off him as well. So, Which is great. You know, it's great for Michael Thomas to not face so many double teams. Uh, not that it affected him at all. Um, but it's only going to help Emmanuel him. Sanders there maybe hurt his numbers because you've got another good receiver no. there? No, I think it helps. I mean, you've got, it allows Michael Thomas. You can't, you can't key on one or the other. This is the good news for Michael Thomas. And with Alvin Kamara back to full fitness and health, and he is ripped, you know, all the talk about him in the offseason, he looks amazing. Um, so I, I feel very comfortable around Michael Thomas coming back. I mean, I was delighted to get Michael Thomas in a live league last year. It sounded odd. I picked him at 11. It's very counterintuitive in those leagues. But it worked out. Um, and it worked out because he is, he is that good. He has been that good for a while. And um, I begrudgingly doffed my hat to my own son, who picked him out year one as the player to watch moving annoyed, forward. Yeah. And he is right. He has been the guy to watch. And he has got better and better every year. And it's hard to deny how big a player this guy is now. He's, he's immense. Okay. Who do you have it to then? I still believe in DeAndre Hopkins' skill set. A lot of people doubt him because he's moved teams. But this guy's played under a lot of quarterbacks. He hasn't had the stability a lot of top guys require. He hasn't had them. And he still produces in a game-in, game-out basis. I think this situation playing under Kyler Murray is perfect for him. Looking at the offense that they're going to build and looking at the coaches that they brought in, it's a match made in heaven. If this guy doesn't just take off from day one, I don't know who will. So DeAndre Hopkins, I will not doubt his ability. Um, he may have changed teams. People will be put off by that. Good if he drops a few places. Excellent. I'll put, it, I'll put him off. But I'm put off by it. I've got him at six. I understand. I do. I genuinely do. But I'm I not. I, I still love this guy. And oh, look, he's a brilliant player. Every time I've owned him, he just produces. You know, like sometimes we have talisman players you know players who when you have them he's gonna, he's you gonna bring you them. down this year he's gonna well he's he, he's always delivered and i just think as well he hasn't he's always going, delivered. He's, he's, had a, he's had at least one poor year i only yeah, he he was poor. you had him yeah you had him on the yeah i won't I won't spy on <laughs> too much about the year i owned him he was absolute garbage and uh, yeah. i traded a lot to get him as well so i was a very yeah, well i like him um so i'm, I'm not hesitating at two i i think he's he's worth it there but it it's semantics. There's a lot of good wide receivers here from two down to about seven. Well, I've, got, the, I've got um, Devontae Adams at two. Um, he's just steady. He proves it every year. He, he's, yeah. their, he's their only receiver, really. I mean, who's number two? We don't know. It could be a number of... It could be that eight names. Um, so, the, Devontae Adams, number two, because he's the only target in Green Bay for do me. You worry, do you worry about the wide receivers? Because, I mean, there's been a, a thing in the NFL. I mean, Michael Thomas has been kind of the exception here. Um, do you worry, um, and this falls under the banner, both Hopkins and Adams, all fall, uh, in fact, all the rest of these guys kind of fall under this banner, that the only year where you could say that the wide receivers bucked the running back trend was 2014 and 15, yeah. when nearly every running back went down. And last year, we saw a lot of these guys. Because you pay, whether you're a 12-team, a 14, a 16-team league, you're going to pay potentially for Michael Thomas, DeAndre Hopkins, probably Devontae. I've got Devontae Adams at three. So it's, we're not far removed with his services. A very high price for these guys, without a doubt. They worry me a little bit that they can't deliver the 200 fantasy points I want in standard. Not Michael Thomas, but DeAndre Hopkins. Oh, yeah, no, I, I mean, but we're talking solely wide receivers here, so I wouldn't yeah. 
I wouldn't pick him high. No, I, no. I'd, I'd prefer. I mean, you pick. Back. Presumably, you pick a running back over them every time, wouldn't you? Yeah, Even running backs win leagues. Running back. I mean, it's proven in every every yeah. every scoring format. Normally, four what? of the four of the top five are running back. So, if you for argument of this video, court. if I had to, if I had to slide in a player here, would you? Where would you put Michael Thomas in the list of running backs that we've given? Where would you roughly put him? Is he worth roughly 10, thinking about about 10, 11? 10. It depends on the scoring format and standard 10. Yeah. In PPR, maybe a bit higher. Eight, so 10. in small small leagues, you wouldn't be even touching Hopkins, Adams until they and fell quite a distance. Well, I've got Hopkins at six in the wide receivers, so that tells you where I've got that him. The lot. uncertainty of going to a new team, he's a great player. Can Carla Murray throw for a load of yards? I mean, I don't know wide receivers do there. Some bits say it's Kirk, some say it's Larry Fitz. I mean, yeah, yeah, yeah. That's fair. I don't know. I, I can't argue that. I, I do agree with you, but it, it's an interest. I got Adams at three. Um, I I think he's very steady for the points, exactly as you've highlighted. Yeah. I think Rogers will have a point. Safer than Hopkins. Hopkins could well outscore him, but I think Adams is safer. I think Rogers is going to have a point to prove this year. So there is a chance Adams actually ends up the number. I do understand your logic of putting him at two. I put him at three because I, I just, there's something about Hopkins always does well for me. Uh, but Devontae Adams, he could end up the number one. It's possible because, yeah, course, yeah. you know, Rogers could have a real chip on his shoulder now and, and it, go out. I mean, seasons rarely repeat, do they? People don't. No. I mean, Thomas and Adams have been up there for a few years. I mean, Adams got injured last year, so. Yeah. Yeah, it affected. I mean, he got a bit of a, a nasty injury. Who, who is your third then? If yeah, Tyreek you... Hill is third for me. Oh, okay. I've got I him just at love four. Tyreek. He, he's just exciting to watch with Mahomes. Um, yeah, yeah. I, I, I've always been a fan of his, and he's always done. I picked him quite early, if you remember. Uh, we did a dinner. Yeah, I, do. I picked him early, and yeah. you were like, "You really trust Tyreek Hill?" I'm like, "Yeah, I do. I think he's really yeah. going to be a big, big star." And I think he is. And he has, and, and he showed. He, he came up clutch in a lot of those playoff games where they were like third and long, and you're like, "Well, Tyree kills the obvious ball here." And there, there's three or four of them around him, and they still he still open. Yeah, so. I've got him at I've got him at four. But to add to your points, since you brilliantly made, I mean, not only, I mean, you were right, you trusted him, but you know, now I look at him and I go. When I look at that player, he's exciting to watch for starters. So he always catch. Does he meet the eye test? Absolutely. Um, and but there's more to it because I think is he is he still is have we seen the peak of Tariq? I don't think we have. I still think there's something more there. I think there's another think career year there. in the playoffs last year. He was he was excellent. So if he can keep his but, off-field antics to a minimum, um, which well, look at it this way. If we're we right about if we're right about Patrick Mahomes being the number one uh, quarterback this year. The big, biggest beneficiary has got to be Tyreek Hill, so he could really jump up the list here. Oh yeah, I mean, I yeah. mean, I know it's only you my list is Sue Watkins, and yeah, you know, you know, it's the same cast, isn't it? Yeah, oh, absolutely. Yeah, so I totally get it. So I, I had him at four, but who do you have at four then? I have Julio at four. I just think he's been there, done it. He always does it every year. Um, he he doesn't show. He's not touchdown dependent, especially in PPR. He just catches. He, he's un, unguardable. I know you. You've got your reservations, but for Julio, for me, he's still still the number one there. At the well, moment. It, it's it's the it's the classic, it's the changing of the guard, right? So I, I do have him high up on the list. He's uh, I, three, I think four, that five. won't change until Julio leaves. I think he's he's just yeah, he, I've got him at seven. Um, I think it, the good thing is he's being disrespected. So even even on my well, list, that, well, you it, well, you're the one disrespected him seven. <laughs> No, well, look, if you look at the other candidates that I've got on my list, you know, this is this is what will this is what will happen. You know, these are the kind of players that will go above him, if I'm honest, based on who, you know, who's gonna I... throw more yards in? What's that? Uh, Kyler Murray and Matt Ryan. Well, I think you have to go with Matt Ryan, but exactly. you have to also look you have to also look at the fact that they've got a guy that's that's coming up the the rail now. Calvin Ridley is the guy you've got to start looking at a little bit more. Yeah, I mean, they Julio, both put up good numbers or fairly good numbers. Yeah, I like. I and mean, don't got, get me wrong. Look, yeah. Julio, you know how important Julio is to me. I mean, I love the guy. I mean, you know, he has been a real talent. Like you've shown him no love whatsoever. What's seven is good. Seven is seven not. is fine. Seven, seven is seven disrespectful. Seven is fine. There's nothing wrong with seven. It's perfectly acceptable. That's poor, it's just though. I prefer other players slightly above him. You okay, know, who's he got way. five then? I'll put Chris Godwin in now. I, I had to I put Chris. Well. 
I, had to I, I don't think he'll be affected by Brady coming in. It might he might be the like the Edelman to, well, to Brady. I think I think he I think he takes a big lift again. He had a great year last year, but it's really hard to argue. Can he improve on it with Brady? I think he does. I think he's a massive beneficiary of that system now. And uh, you know, when you're looking at wide receivers that could climb higher than their position, it's a great pick. I mean, I like him a lot. So I, I there's not much I can say. I mean, it's really weird. I wasn't. I wasn't the same as other dro- analysts last year on Godwin. Some people definitely had him. I, I was back on him. He, he was the yeah, first my guys list, first one mentioned. You know, and I, I now get what people have seen probably a year too late, fair enough. But I do see it. And so you have to account for it. And so there he's on my list. And he's a player that I can comfortably trust. So, But now, seen, you, now you're paying the price for Godwin. So Of course. You I'm, know, I'm and that's interested the issue. in him this year. And, and the problem, the problem here is as well, this is really highlights beautifully in these lists, is a lot of these players we're talking about, in fact, nearly all of them here, nearly all of them, maybe with the, the exceptional one or two in my top 10, you're going to pay a, at least a second round premium for their services, probably for most of them, even in a smaller league. And the question is, is that good value for money or would you have been better going a second running back? This is a real question you're going to ask yourselves as you go into your leagues this year. It's fascinating stuff, actually. It really can be the difference. Get it right, you don't skip a beat even if you pick a wide receiver. Get it wrong, you definitely miss a beat. The reason Godwin and Hopkins are five and six because Godwin had a good year last year. and uh, But Winston, Seamus Winston, threw for a lot of yards. So that's why Godwin was a beneficiary. Not always to his own team. But he he was chucking the ball almost blind after time. Um, yeah. And, and Brady won't throw it unless it's there. You know, he, he looks after the ball. So Godwin will be the There beneficial. is a risk that even though Brady's an amazing player, um, that he takes a... That's why he's at five and not higher for me. Because yeah, I think, God, I think Godwin gets lots of targets. So do I, so right? do I. That's you know, right. lots of targets, and they might be dink and dunk stuff, but in the end of the season, it's going to be very profitable, particularly in PPR leagues. Yeah, particularly no, I, in PPR. I, I agree. Um, so, who's your number? Who are your five and six? Well, you've got my five, which is Chris Godwin. Yeah. Um, my number four was Tyreek Hill, but my number six is the surprise name on this list, and I need to quantify why he sits here. It's Mike Evans. Now, I. Think this is the gambler's well, he, pick of the he, whole. He is about this on in consensus. Yeah. He is about this. This is this is the gambler's pick of the wide receivers in the first couple of rounds. Now, if you want a guy that's capable of being the number one wide receiver, Mike Evans is that guy. He's proved it before. If you want a guy that can rip off big plays, yeah, and consistently deliver fantasy numbers, Mike Evans is that guy. The trouble I have, I can't put him lower down the list because. It just wouldn't be right. But at the same token, I don't want to touch him. So I'm really in two minds here. This is a real problem player for me. This year. I think. Yeah. He's not made my top 10. Yeah. I mean, Evans is an amazing player, but I don't think he suits Brady. When's well, the last time is... a, a wide receiver with Brady had massive numbers, or two of them? It, it was. You'd be going back. My, a few years. You're talking Randy Moss. Yeah, exactly. You want to. You want to you know, you're you're talking Randy Moss when when Brady was in his heyday. Yeah, exactly. And Can he support people, these? People, oh, and no, I mean, I'm, me. I'm very I'm very very concerned about paying the price of my game. So, in all truthfulness, yes, I Winston would. Th- when they won't, he won't throw for as many yards as Winston. So they here's, that means they both can't do this. Here's my issue. Here's my issue because I could leave Evans off my list, but I know he's I going. About. Off my. You know, I know he's going about here. Would I pick him here? No, because I would rather take Julio Jones, if I'm honest. There are other players I'd rather take, but I just know that Evans won't be deeper down my list. So I, I put him in here he because he's be. a gambler. Should he's be the deep. gambler's He's a gambler's, he's a gambler's pick. pick. He's not. Fool's goal, mate. Well, he's going high and he's not going to deliver. So, Well, people might think he could still. And he, that's could. The he could. I mean, he's a good a, player. Brady's a you good know, player. He's a very talented player and... We, you know, maybe Brady has a renaissance. You know, I think uh, Winston was better for these fantasy wise than Brady, yeah. and that's why I agree. you're paying the Winston price, not the Brady price. Winston yeah, tripped five thousand yards, you know, so Brady's not going to yeah. do that. No, if he if he does, a lot of it will be dink and duck stuff. So, and that that's going to affect Evans. That's why he didn't make my top ten. And he's in a surprise and a mission, even to me, really. especially. Yeah, 
Yeah, well, I can understand the omission. I mean, I'm, I'm very close. I mean, there's a lot. Don't there's a lot it. of players in again. It's like the running back list. Look, Mike Evans. I could shift him down seven or eight spots quite comfortably at this point. I well, probably I have, will. Yeah. Well, probably will when we come to draft. He won't okay. be on my. Uh, so what was well, that? Was, I had, your, was that your seven? No, my seven was Julio Jones. Okay, I've got Kenny Galladay at seven. Oh, that's okay because I've got Galladay at nine, and I think he's great value. Actually, I still think he's a brilliant value player. I well, love him. I still. I don't think we've seen the best of him yet. I think he's he's proven, and he did it without Stafford as well last year, pretty much. Stafford yeah. was injured for a lot of it, still produced. I mean, he is he's a big time player. I mean, he's got the chance to move right up this. And list people this don't year. like him because he plays for Detroit. Well, they have to guess what they have to throw a lot because they're the worst team in yeah. the division. Well, so. I think Kenny Galladay. Been again. This is kind of a reverse. The Aaron Jones. I've had Kenny Galladay since he entered the league. Um, I'm yeah, still a huge yeah. fan. And uh, he's proved it every single year, and he's getting better. I still don't think we've seen the best of him, so I think he's a great player. I don't. Yeah, I don't you know, like... you, again, you were, he was on our rookies to target late draft because he was going yeah. in the third round in a rookie yeah, draft. To... And now yeah, look at him he's going third round in some proper draft. Big leagues. Yeah. So I mean, I get why you've got him up there at seven. I've got him at nine, um, and that's okay. I'm, I would quite happily move him ahead of Mike Evans, and probably will do before the season hits. To be honest, I'm talking you out of Evans already. Who, who have you got at eight? I've, I've got AJ Brown. I've been a huge fan of this I've guy. I've got him at nine. I've got him at nine. Yeah, I love him. I love him to bits. I mean, you know, he, he was on my sleeper list for rookies last year um, at the 108 position. I, I had him there from before the rookies landed. I've loved him. Um, I was hoping, hoping that he could show what he was capable of. And he's obviously found quarterback change makes all the difference. When it was Marcus Mariota, he was a shadow. As soon as Tannehill came in, A.J. Mario Brown blew cool. up. Um, quarterbacks can make all the difference to talent, and A.J. Brown now looks a, a, looks a great player. It didn't make difference to Corey Davis, though, did it? You've oh, got to have the talent. Absolute garbage. Yeah. I, I well, like what's Brown. happened to him? Where, why is he so don't bad? Know. Don't know. I mean, you've got everything right for you now, and you still can't produce. Brown is just exciting to watch. I mean, he, yeah, he looks... I mean... Uh, he gains he yards. He gets. I think open. you've got to, you've still got to guard about being too carried away with him because you know it's any glimpses so far. It was it looked really good, but you know this sophomore slump can affect anyone. A Tannehill injury. Oh yeah, it can change. It can change in a heartbeat. But if we we're, we're basing off what they're capable and and has he got the chance to move? Oh yeah, he's, he, he could be great. I I think he's got a chance. Good. See, wide receivers when they does you he know, when they the offense, that Tennessee offense. I think the offense is play action, isn't it? I think it works really well for Brown. I mean, Tannehill is very accurate. It, his sort of range of throwing fits AJ Brown brilliantly. Brown can break off big plays. They've got the running game you have to respect. It looks really well set up for another good year for Brown. And, and another year in the NFL level can only improve, you know, can only improve how you are as a player. And I, I just think the thing about him that's really interesting is that humbleness and desire to want to be great are the yeah. kind of qualities I love in a player. And he just exhibits those. And I'm very excited to see what he does next. Yeah, me too. I've got him at nine, so we're not far apart. My number no, eight is Amari Cooper. Um, yeah, that's, that's Just, just because enough. I'm big on Dak as well. I think they'll throw for 5,000 yards. He's going to be the main beneficiary. He's the number one. The crowd love him. It, it's very clear to see. Um, he's just signed yeah, I've that. Got, I've got Amari Cooper just outside the top 10, but this is only because. Um, yeah, I, I totally get where the, the Dallas offense is heading this year, and there's going to be a lot of, yeah, it's going to be probably a 5,000 yard air offense again. Uh, there's going to be a lot of beneficiaries. Amari Cooper is going to be one of them. Um, I think it's exciting. Um, but I, I just, I, for me, he's the most frustrating fantasy player in history. He has boom weeks, he has terrible weeks. And I just. Yeah, but what player stand. doesn't? There's not many, you know, players that don't. Yeah. He, but let me give you he some examples. Had bad injury, but yeah, he got an injury, didn't he? So it affected give him. Some examples of my Amari Cooper experiences. I play him one week, I get 0 0.4. I, pl I don't play him the next week, he gets 42 points. Oh, yeah. I hate well, you're playing for the Raiders then. You got Derek Carr throwing the ball to him, not that. Oh, God. He was pretty no, consistent just... when he played last year. Yeah, he's um, he he definitely improved in the Dallas offense, no doubt. But uh, he player. just. It's only just slightly outside the top ten, and again, these are all interchangeable. This top sort of, yeah, yeah, you know, anywhere from about five right the way through to eleven or twelve. They're very, very close. Who, who have you got nine? Uh, Kenny Holiday for me. Yeah, at okay. nine. 
So here you got a I, 10. I, I've got a, a surprising guy. I'm going to target a lot. Oh, yeah, me too. And I have done. DK Metcalf at 10. I'm surprised. I love, I love surprised. Metcalf, but I can't have him this high yet. I've got Metcalf here at 10. Now, it could have been Calvin Ridley uh, because I'm all over him as well. But they're going at the right kind of value. I just think I've got to mention DK Metcalf now. So I thought I'd stick him at the end of this lovely list. because oh, I drafted him everywhere last year. Uh, I've got him in every league format I could grab him in this year. You've noticed. <laughs> I've got him everywhere. Him and Marky I've got all Brown. In. You've got a lot of. I know. Yeah, chips, I've been watching. Chips, all, chips all in. DK Metcalf, Marquis Brown, a few others. Calvin Ridley. Love him. Metcalf, 900 yards. You know, six touchdowns. A rookie season. He's an absolute beast. Oh, no, totally. with, Russell, with Russell Wilson. I mean, the guy... You know, he's, he was ripped when he started. I mean, that's a big, that's a big factor, it seems to me, to come in physically fit. Yeah, he's an absolute... Ripped. I mean, and not only that, worry, but his off-season regime, even during COVID, is just a dream. I mean, I watched it. You know, like you see the old-fashioned tapes. Some right? people so enjoy some... the working out, don't they? <laughs> Some well, people. I remember watching Jerry Rice and Chris Carter and like the old wide receivers, and and they would have like their own area that they would train in, and obviously it would be away from, you know, normal gyms and various locations where they used to train in those days, and he would have his own personal trainer, and they would often with Carter, he would go off to this like uh, dis disused car lot where all the cars had been abandoned, there were hills all around it. And he'd literally run these hills, go up and down with a medicine ball. Well, this guy, DK Metcalf, is, is literally running up hills, pulling huge weights. I mean, it's incredible to watch. I mean, it's just, it's just mind-blowing. Uh, yeah, totally. I, I mean, to watch this I, I guy. I didn't look him into the league, actually, because he, he, he's a physical player as well. So, what, yeah. made me, what really interested me was the workouts I've seen. I mean, again, these are only a few-minute segments where you see the guy, and I mean, okay, some of it could be, you think, could be for the press, but the one thing that oh, really sure. stands out for me is when you see a guy who's picked an area, this is away from the crowds, classic sort of situation, you pick this hill, and this hill is like one of these 33 degree kind of hills, and you oh, can yeah, see, always running up then. you can see where he's made his mark in this hill constantly, so this is no fluke, there's this mark, I mean, it's like a trail that he's been making through it, and it's just him running up and down this same line, but not only that, but when he's doing this work, he's being thrown the ball to. He doesn't know whether it's coming to his right or his left. He's running uphill. So you've got to imagine the effort going uphill because your focus isn't to look back, I can tell you that. And yet he's able to locate and find the ball each time and make a play on it. It's unbelievable. I just think this guy's due for a huge step. And so I think he's great. You know, you preach value to me. He's going in the third round of a lot of drafts, sometimes the fourth round. DK Metcalf, all day long. I'll have shares of you, yes. Even ahead of some of these third-tier running backs. Absolutely. I think my number 10 is, I, he's not going to go anywhere near 10 in, in the uh, wide receiver list. And it's going to really surprise you, because I know you don't like him. Yeah, OK. Adam Thielen. OK, Adam yeah. Thielen is the only yeah. receiver. I mean, obviously, they've got uh, Justin Jefferson now as well. But he's yeah. a rookie. We just don't know how much time he's had. We don't no, know if he's going to be good yeah. enough. Yeah, you don't I'm know. I'm there, and he's proven, and he's underrated. And for redraft, I don't want him in Tennessee. I, he's getting on. I don't think that's. I don't think that's actually a bad shout. I mean, I've got Phelan on my list at fourteen, right? So it's not for two. I just say anybody on this list from about seven up there to about that point, very interchangeable. So I totally Who's get it. Let me catch the ball there. Is it, they don't throw to tight ends. The rookies, the rookies are going to have less training camp. They're going to come in with less prep time less one-to-one -one work, less group work, less everything, really. So for wide receivers, this is incredibly detrimental to timing. You have to get that down with the quarterback and the line. You ain't going to have as much time. So these wide receivers coming in, let's be honest, are going to be much harder to assess logically and are going to probably be a lot slower to start. Now, there will be some shocks and players who really, you know, as the season yeah, wears on, who will break out and do brilliantly well. Justin Jefferson could be one of those, could be one of those. But, but I it just is, it might not affect Thielen. I mean, even if but, some Diggs numbers, which is high. Well, Adam Thielen, I, that, and that is the other part more. to it. That is the other part to it, which you you know you are right to put in here. I don't disagree. It's not actually that horrendous because I think you know with Diggs leaving, Thielen is the beneficiary of another how many catches. I mean, I mean Kirk Cousins is an underrated quarterback. He, he's he's currently no one likes him. 
not on our show. He loses big games, but yeah, not on our show. Fantasy. We love him here. For his value. Like, we don't think yeah, he's like a top value. five quarterback, but we think he's not far well, off. He's not, and he's going he's, 20 yeah. or something. So. Well, you, you go for value. With Kirk Cousins, you get him late, and you know he's going to exceed his numbers. And here's a stat for you. Kirk Cousins is the most underrated quarterback in the league because if you examine his stats since he's been in the league and where he went on the ADP before draft days, and I'm going to use draft days for the whole of August, he has exceeded his draft value by 10 places every single year since he was in the league. So therefore, he is the most cheap, underrated quarterback in the league, bar none. He's massive, massive. Russell Wilson, we all know, is a top five guy, whether you want him at five or four or three. Poor old Cousins goes 20, 21, 26. That's a big mistake. He's a great value guy. He will deliver beyond those He's numbers. He's not a big mistake if you can get him at 20, 22. Great. Happy so take it, it because he, he he's has the like, He's your QB2 probably in most leagues. So. so I like Kirk for the value. So I will always go for value. And so that's, he, that's what I'm talking about here with Thielen. He's not going to go that high. And he should be because there's no one else to throw to. And they, 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 they will a, throw the ball. Cousins can throw the ball. <laughs> It's an astute pick. And, Who else? Um, Justin Jefferson's going to yeah. play in the slot. They're going to have Tajay Sharp playing. I mean, you're going to tell me he's going to have a great year. I'll uh, tell you. I mean, you've got you've got Diggs targets to to kind of spread out here, and the, the tricky bit is, you know, he, Fina must be a beneficiary of that. So if he gets an additional 30, 40 looks, yeah, he's going to. You're, you're talking top five numbers, possibly. You're, you're going to add. If he gets 40 more looks, which is very logical. I mean, that's, that's logical based on spreading the load around a bit. Yeah. If he gets 40 looks, a, quarter, a wide receiver of his calibre must catch 30, at least 30 of those 40. That's just how good he is. Um, if he catches 30, I mean, what's that worth to him? I mean, that's got to be another 300, 300 yards, probably there at about 280, 300. That's probably worth another two or three scores. So it Where does elevate. Him? Fourth round, maybe? Fifth round? I think you get him fourth or fifth round in a lot of leagues. I yeah. think that's great value. So I can't. I'm not it, arguing. My wide right. receiver too. I'll take it all day long. I I think you are them. very wise to put him on the top ten. People list. are missing I'm, it, and I'll tell you they're missing one in the running backs. But we'll talk. I'm not going to talk about him yet. But I'm, I probably no. Save it. Save it yeah, for another time. I'm going time. to say that till near the season. But he's, he's dead. People are going to be horribly wrong with him. Um, they yeah, well, I've. I way out. I think. Oh, in the bold prediction list, my guy is a, a running back I've got who is not in the top four rounds in any league format, and I'm making an incredible bold prediction on him for this season. So um, oh, there, there you go, and that even includes our own leagues. Well, we look forward so, to that. <laughs> so it, a guy that's definitely outside that obvious list. They're not be so my They're not be my Well, it might be. It'd be interesting if it is, but <laughs> it would maybe. be. Wouldn't it be fun? Anyway, there's our... All there's right, our. well, there's the wide receiver 10 list. Um, uh, I think there's some interesting names on there. Um, Can't argue you with want to hear them. yours. Who have we missed out? I mean, I haven't put Evans on, and that's probably a mistake. But. I mean, I've, got a couple of, I've got a couple of other guys here I, I would love to tack on to the 10 list, but I can't. They, they, it's you can't. You get 10. You know, you've already yeah. trying to sneak Calvin Ridley on as well. You're not having him. He's not in your top 10. You didn't mention him. him. Yeah. You're not having him. He's not that's there. Fair enough. You had your chance to put him in and you didn't. Yeah, I'll just take him in leagues. That's what I'll do. You might I'll, take, I'll <laughs> take him in leagues. That's what I tend to do. Yeah, well, that's why, you know, we we, we talked about quarterbacks as well. So, um, yeah, we'll go on to those next. We'll chat about those in a minute. All right. Well, if you've enjoyed the video, I mean, if we missed anyone, have you got any surprising ones you think he could break the... Uh, I mean, there's no Keenan Allen on here. I mean, no. No. Not so keen say. on him this year, right? No yeah, Calvin Ridley on here for either of us. None of us mentioned him. So uh, No, we yeah. no, we haven't mentioned him at all. And why would you bother drafting him? If you're in a large league, drafting him is me, leave him. That's the wise words. If I, I've got to pick him now, if I'm one pick before you <laughs> I've got to take, I don't even want him, but just throw out of spite. That's just the way yeah, it is. it's all right, I've got quite a few shares. I mean if you fancy you need to take one yeah, share. A big league where you really want him. So you know, that's gonna hurt. Well you can't have everybody, you can only take one player around. I've always said that. If you want to take Calvin Ridley first round, you that's your if you're taking more than one player around, to be fair. If you want to take Calvin Ridley first round now, that's fine. You go for it. No one's gonna disrespect you. Laugh at you, but I might just do it. That's yeah, good man. Okay. All right. This has had a bit of a nonsense on at the end. Uh, if you've enjoyed the video, um, please give us a thumbs up and uh, subscribe for more. We've got some big things coming. We've just hinted at some of that. So uh, more good things to come. And uh, thanks for watching. We'll see you on the see next you. one.